Did Fender make their own Blues Junior Killer? Hey everyone, I'm Jack Fawcett and welcome to this demo and review of the Fender Bass Breaker 15. This is a, it's actually a whole series of tube amplifiers that Fender has done, the Bass Breaker series. The 15, at least as far as I've seen, has been one of the more popular ones. And the idea of it is to capture some vintage Marshall tone in and about the Fender kind of classic tube amp style in a gigging and recording sort of setup. This is an amp that has a lot of features and again, it's a one of many that are in this series and this is one that is particularly kind of sought after from what I've seen. So, Bass Breaker, if you can imagine, is kind of a takeoff on Blues Breaker like the old Eric Clapton, like the Marshall that I have kind of sitting right here next to me. And again, going for that classic Marshall tone as opposed to an ultra high gain tone. Interestingly about this amplifier is it still kind of has its fendery cleans, but then that Marshall sort of character starts to show up the more drive you put in. Now, as far as features goes, one of the biggest and best features it has is a, a gain sort of selector switch with low, medium, and high. It also has digital reverb. It has a Celestian V-type speaker. And for recording purposes, this is something that's particularly cool, is it has an XLR out with a speaker <laughs> it has an XLR out with a speaker emulation. It also has an effects loop, and, you know, it's just, it's got a lot going on for it, as opposed to some of the other Fender amps that are a little bit more in the classic sort of realm. This one has a lot of modern features, but kind of retains that classic tone. Now... At a similar price point, this does a lot that the Blues Junior doesn't. And I, I do want to bring up the Blues Junior in this because it's kind of an obvious comparison. You know, even the size of the amp is the same. Kind of the, the classic tone idea is the same. This one has the black tweed covering with this kind of like, uh, it's got the old style Fender logo. It's trying to evoke a certain style. What I think this amp does absolutely best is mid-gain tones. It does a beautiful edge of breakup kind of tone where as you kind of dig in and you just get some some nice kind of sparkle and drive but if you back off it stays really clean i like it best in the mid gain setting now i have found that it can still be a little boxy some fender tube amps in this kind of range can sound a little boxy they can sound a little plasticky and this one wasn't necessarily different in that sense. Uh, I found it needs the mids to be dialed. I wouldn't push them past noon, and I liked them tucked a little bit back behind noon, because it already has a fair amount of mid-range inherent in the circuit. 
Highs were as you would expect. You know, it can it, it has a little more range on the highs than I would expect, but it's not. It still can be a bright amp and can be harsh if you push the highs too much. It does have a nice range on the bass. Um, but in general, I really found it sounds best if you keep the knobs relatively close to noon, which sounds boring. I wish I had some kind of wacky thing to tell you all for this video for, you know, oh, make it sound this way if you do this. And I just thought, no, it just really sounds kind of does its thing with the knobs relatively close to noon. Now, if you're looking for classic Marshall tones, obviously a lot of people are looking for gain. I will say one of the things that I found somewhat disappointing on this amp was the high, higher gain. It's not a high gain amp, but the higher gain setting. It sounded really good if you dialed the gain back and went for more of a crunch tone, which is what you heard in the intro with the Les Paul. I think that's a pretty good tone. However, that was about its limit, as far as I could tell. If you push the gain more on that higher gain setting, it got kind of squealy and it got really noisy, and I didn't like that. And it also was sort of drastically different than the other gain settings, and I just didn't think that it worked if you pushed the gain too hard. Yeah, it still does a lot more crunch than like a Blues Junior would, so that's kind of cool, and, and it does get that again, kind of classic Marshall-y, sort of. It has EL84 power amps, which is also what the Blues Junior has, so. Now, the digital reverb thing about it, and I saw somewhere that it was a hall, a digital hall reverb, and then somewhere else just a digital reverb, so if anybody knows more about that, feel free to chime in, but it sounds like Fender's digital hall reverb, which I've heard on other models. Their digital hall reverb is a fine sounding reverb in its own right. I don't don't go all digital because some digital reverbs are great. This one's kind of middle of the road. It sounds nice. It sounds airy. But I found that with Fender's digital hall reverb on some of these mid level models, if you push it really hard, it has it's it's almost more like a shimmer. It doesn't sound like a hall reverb to me. It sounds like a big reverb with some like kind of light modulation on it, but not necessarily hall. So that's just something in the the phrasing, but. I think if you play this amp on that mid-gain setting with like a little bit of atmospheric reverb, it's just a great tone, and it really works with that. The clean tone on it is really nice. Uh, I, I didn't think the clean tone kind of had as much, it didn't have as much body, it didn't have as much oomph, so if you're going to play live and you're looking at having a dynamic amp in and of itself, uh, I didn't think the clean... I didn't think the amp balanced really well, I want to say. So, like, between the clean and the mid-gain and the heavier drive, each one of them were really good tones, but I, I didn't necessarily think that they they didn't fit as well together. They, they didn't seamlessly transition from one into the next. It sounded, the, the difference was kind of drastic. So, that's something that if you're using this amp for a live setting, you might might face some challenges, and if anyone has any great tips, please feel free to leave those in the comments of what you've done to balance this amp, how do you run it. In that vein, one of the things we're going to do coming up is also hit it with a Tube Screamer on the mid-gain setting. I'm using the Tamura Mod Tube Screamer. Some of you might have seen my recent demo of that. Just to show you how well it takes pedals, because, you know, classic thing, use a small Fender tube amp with a pedal and get some great results. And I think it takes pedals pretty well, so I think that's a really great option for someone who's kind of looking to set the amp in a certain way and then use pedals to get the rest of your tone. Of course, obviously having the effects loop, that makes a massive difference too. To have an amp like this level with an effects loop really gives you a lot more tonal flexibility, particularly when you're talking about getting at least a fair amount of drive from the amp itself. So again, you've just heard it on the high gain setting with the Les Paul and the mid gain setting with the Fender Stratocaster. Next, we're going to play it clean, give it a little bit of a boost on the reverb. Going to play it on the mid gain setting with the Les Paul. Going to do the high gain setting with the Stratocaster, which is kind of a unique thing, and I almost got like an 80s Clapton inspired. Inspired, okay? Harp on that word, inspired, because I'm not saying like, oh, this nails that tone. No, no, no. It's just in the realm of. So I got some kind of cool 80s inspired Clapton tones with the Stratocaster going into the higher gain setting, and again, then we are also going to hit it with a pedal. Let us know. Do you have a bass breaker? Do you have the 15? Do you have the 30R, which was the latest one, which is a bigger one? Uh, do you have one of the original run ones, which the original one run, they had a, a seven watt, and then they had a bigger one, which did not have reverb. And there have been kind of a number of ones kicking out there. There have been some limited edition ones with regular tweed and other coverings. Let us know what you have, what your experience is, and what have you used it for? Do you use it with the XLR out for direct recording? Do you use it? 
it out on the road? Do you find the same thing with the balance of the amp? Let us know in the comments. I'm Jack Fawcett. Follow me on Jack Fawcett Official for some great music. Support me on Patreon. I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. Hmm.